Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. Ephesians chapter 3 For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ. Some people get locked up for their belief. Some people have been placed into prison for their belief, for their faith, for preaching. And Paul was one of those men in jail for the crime of Jesus Christ and the word for you Gentiles so we're right into non-Jews we're right into uh, Ham and Jacob the children and what we're going to see is a twist now because we've been talking about the law and that's for Israel now we gotta to go to the other people, the non-Jew, those that are not of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, word. So, <clears throat> this dispensation of grace, on this side of Calvary, on this side of the empty tomb, has been a revelation given to Paul by God as the book of Revelation has been given to the Apostle John by Jesus Christ. And one much study, there are two groups of men that is a very interesting study. Noah and Adam and Paul and John. Noah and Adam, there, there's so many similarities. Now, Paul and John, they both write to churches. They both write mysteries. They both write things that have not been heard. And for John, many of the things hasn't even happened yet. And will happen. So, what we've got now is grace. What's opposite of grace? Law. Now, remember when we, when we were in the book of Galatia. Galatians. They had converted themselves back to the law and Paul had to rebuke them how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote a four and few words so Paul has already written Ephesians a book that we don't have the Holy Spirit does not want us to have that letter the Holy Spirit has signed sealed and delivered 66 books of the King James Bible for our reading and study. But Paul wrote other letters. You think just the epistles that we have in, in our Bible is the only time that Paul ever wrote? It'd be foolish to think. And he had to send letters off and, and correction and gratification and help and study. Listen, you're, done, you're dealing with a bunch of dumb sheep. Troubles, problems. Each of these churches, problems are arising. They need help. They don't know what to do. And Paul would write to them. As he's written to them, mystery. Something that has not been revealed, that has been unknown. Now we have in the Bible, let me read to you, one, godliness. 2 Timothy 3.16, God in the flesh. We have, number two, iniquity. 2 Thessalonians 2 3, that's the man of sin. These are these are mysteries. 3. The church, Ephesians 5, one body. 
is a mystery. Uh, blindness. Romans 11.25, the blindness of Israel, 2 Corinthians 3, is a mystery. Babylon, Revelation 17, that's religion. The indwelling Christ, Colossians 1.27, Christ in you. David never knew that. Solomon never knew that. Jews and Gentiles, Ephesians 3, one body, we're going to read about this in a moment, one body, Jew and Gentile together. Well, listen, the Gentile was a dead dog. When we have the examples of Jonah and Peter, well, you want me to go to those people? No way, God, they're filthy. They're, ew, gross. Prejudice And now God says, through that veil being ripped, the holies of holies, go and reach to those people. There will be no prejudice with the dispensation of grace, the gospel of Jesus Christ. We ought to be trying to reach everybody and anybody. Go in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Everybody, anybody, for whosoever believeth, anybody. It's not just Jews anymore. The door has been opened to the world. Where did I leave off? Indwelling Christ. Indwelling, uh, number 8. The rapture. 1 Corinthians 15, 51. Or 31. I got bad writing. And number 9. Colossians 4, 3. Of Christ. So a mystery we're going to set forth in this chapter. And Paul has written... I'm just trying to figure out where we were. Whereby, when ye read that letter I sent you, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. I sent you a letter about what I'm going to explain to you. I'm just going to recap. That's what he's doing. It's a recap of what he already written to him. Which is a revelation to us. Which in other ages, Old Testament, was not made known unto the sons of men. From Adam to Paul, what we're going to study has never been revealed. What is that revelation? Though we see some hints of it. We see the Queen of Sheba, a Gentile, coming to Saul. We see Naaman, a Gentile, coming to Israel's God for help with leprosy. We see, <coughs> excuse me, we see a nation sent by a Jewish prophet. Nineveh, getting right with God. We see a Ethiopian eunuch leaving Jerusalem where Philip meets with him and he comes to know Christ as his Savior. We see Peter reaching out to Cornelius' house with the gospel. But the revelation of what is going to happen has not been shown until after Paul is saved. And we read in, in uh, uh, I have to look, we read in Galatians that Paul went off to Arabia, not to Bible school. He went to meet Jesus Christ with the revelation, almost like Paul going up to the mountain to speak with God. And what's the revelation? What is the mystery set forth now? It's the mystery of the Jew and Gentile. God, God is not setting everything out for one race of people. It's for all. It's the world. As it is now revealed unto, unto his holy apostles, that's Paul. Paul would br brought it to Peter, James, and John. We know several times that Paul went to Jerusalem. He met with the officials in Jerusalem, and he would tell them. Listen, when they came, when Paul came the first time, and he meets with them, he's got some explaining to do to them. What do you mean, uh, you know, you're 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 reaching out to these people? What do you mean there's no circumcision? What do you mean by? And Paul's gonna say, listen, I met with Jesus Christ. And the revelation I got for you is that law is gone. 
then they sit down at the Council of Jerusalem, they, and they, for the Gentiles, they set rules. For the Gentiles, outside the law. Things not to be strangled. Flee from fornication. Go out and tell that addition to the gospel of Jesus Christ. But as far as circumcision and all that, no. That doesn't mean needed. Again, we saw that in the Galatia church. They were going back to circumcision as salvation. They're going back to works as salvation. Paul said, hey, we're under grace. And it's been given to the apostles and prophets. So prophets are still around. I'm a prophet. Because I can tell you what's going to happen to you when you die. If you receive Christ, you're going to go to glory, New Jerusalem. If you don't receive Christ, you're going to go to hell. Now, I can't tell you what the winning numbers are going to be. I can't tell you who your future husband's going to be. I can't tell you where you're going to live, what job. I can't tell you that. I can tell you revelations, and I can tell you prophecies that come from the Word of God. And if it doesn't come from the Word of God, I'd be a liar. So there are prophets by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit of God revealed to Paul this mystery, the Jew and the Gentile. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. That is a mystery. The Gentiles are now in. Now, you remember when Jesus in his ministry, there's a, there's a Gentile woman whose daughter is possessed with the devil. She reaches out to him for help, and he just ignores her and calls her a dog. He says, yeah, Lord, but we get the crumbs off the table of Israel. And he stop, she stops Jesus right in his tracks. We can see Gentiles in. See, when we go to John chapter 1, what is the pure ministry of Jesus Christ? Let's go to John chapter 1. See, you know what we people in the church age say? We think the Bible is all about us, and it's not. John 1 and verse 11. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. He came to Jewish. Jesus is Jewish. The Jews rejected him. The blindness in part has happened in Israel because they rejected him. And here comes the Gentile. Listen, us Gentiles are only in because Israel rejected their Messiah. And God said, okay, fine. You know what? You want to be like that, Israel? I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll let those dead dogs in. I'll let that scum of the earth who worship all kinds of idols. Paul says, dumb idols. I'll let them in. Let's see, how you, let's see what you think of that. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs. I have an inheritance to Jesus Christ. Romans 10 says, whether Jew or Greek, we are together. If a Jewish man is saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, I am saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. We go to the same New Jerusalem. We got the same God. We got the same Savior. We are the same family. That wasn't so in the, New, in the Old Testament. The Old Testament, the Jew wasn't promised heaven. The Jew did not want to go to heaven. The Jew wanted that land that God given them. That's why we got the new earth coming. That's the Jews. New Jerusalem is those that have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body. You want to explain that one to Jonah and Peter time past? When ages ago? Imagine if God would have told Jonah, I, now I want you to go live in Nineveh, and I want you to go help them. He'd still be out there underneath that, that tree, griping and complaining and waiting for destruction. See, there was a barrier, there was a wall between Jew and Gentile. And your modern education systems, you know, they're, they're teaching you wrong. <clears throat> God favors. God has a love for one race of people called Jews, Israelites, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. 
and a more love so for Judah, and then you follow the line of Jesus Christ, the beloved Son of God. And now we can come in, the Gentiles. Same body, the church body. The body, when the rapture happens, when all the those that are in Christ arise in the clouds, it doesn't matter what race you are. It doesn't matter what sex you are. It doesn't matter what age you are. If you are saved, you are the body. Not the building. The body. Church is never a building. It's the body. And you know what that body is made of? It's made of Africans. It's made of Europeans. It's made of Asians. It's made of Jewish. It's made of Americans. And when I mean America, I mean North, South, and Central Americans. Native Americans. We're all one by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's the mystery. That was not ever shown in the, in the Old Testament. And partakers of his promise. What is the promise of God? Eternal life. A home. A glory. A city. The Jews have a city. Jerusalem. The church has a city. New Jerusalem. In Christ. Now here, now here, now watch, now watch, now watch. You mark this. By Christ, in Christ, by the gospel. What is the salvation of today? The dispensation of grace. That Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, was buried, and arose again the third day, according to the scriptures. It is not the law. There is no grace by the law. It comes by the gospel. <clears throat> where I was a made a minister, Paul, minister, according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Paul's work, Paul's ministry, everything Paul had to do was to the Gentiles. That was his church. That was his, his service. That was his ministry to the Gentiles. Peter is the Jew. And it's funny how you have a church that foundations their both upon Peter, the apostle to the Jews, stealing the promises of the Jews. They're over there in that land right now, the Roman Catholics telling you, oh, this is where Jesus wasn't, this is what Jesus didn't do, you know, and they're all their false beliefs. See, that church, they want the physical, give it to me, I can see it. Land where that church is going off with wars like Israel in the Old Testament. But we, today, Christians, we don't want a piece of land. We're not of this world. This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. A lot of Christians today, you wouldn't even believe that. And shame on you. My place is New Jerusalem. My place is to be the one who died for me. Power was given to Paul. You read his life. You read the perils, the shipwrecks, the stoning. The guy was stoned to death. That was a Jewish form of capital punishment. And he walked up, got up, and shook it off, and walked right back in. And at one point in the book of Acts, he says to the Jews, All right, I'm done with you. I love you. I pray for you, but the blood of my, the, your blood is not on my fingers no more. Henceforth, I'm going to the Gentiles. And you know he went and witnessed the Jews too. But his primary focus was to the Gentiles. That would make Paul a complete oddball. That would make Paul completely hated by the brethren because he's hanging around with, with these weirdos called Gentiles. And then when he comes back to Jerusalem, he's in the temple alone. And what is the charge put against Paul? He brought Gentiles into our holy place. Well, excuse me. Ephesians, it says here, written A.D. 64. And I don't know about that date. I don't know anything about dates. Could be right. But if it's right, guess what's going to happen in six years then? Titus, a Gentile, is going to come and destroy Jerusalem. Like Nebuchadnezzar destroyed Jerusalem. Gentile got power over in Daniel's time. The Gentiles are in power today in Jesus' time. Unto me, Paul, 
who am less than the least of all saints, Paul is, he's humble. Is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles? The unsearchable riches of Christ, Christ is too rich. You can't get a ledger or a record book and record everything that God has. Because we haven't been to heaven. Let's say you could grab all the gold from the earth right now. All of it. Every little tiny piece of dust. And you write it down in a book. Let's say you can gather all the silver. All of it. And write it down in a book. And iron. And all the raw resources that this earth has. You gather it all. And you put it down in a book. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's in heaven? We don't know. What resources there are there in heaven? Look, in Revelation 20 tells us that the foundations and the, the building assumptions of New Jerusalem. We forgot that. And yet the God that we're going to read about, the Creator, can just say, Hey, let it be so. From His mouth. From His words. And it is so. God can tell a donkey, hey, I want you to preach to that man. Okay. And he opens his mouth and preaches. God can tell a crow, hey, you grab that food, don't you dare swallow it, and you bring it to this man over here. And the, the crow will do it. That's the riches. That is the resource of God, a wonderful thing. Haven't you ever had God give you something more and abound at what you can give? I just had it happen. I just had God go up and over a bank account that I ever could have to bless me. And yet with the riches of God, he has all resources. The riches of God. It, it's Christ is too rich. And to make all men, all men, see what is the fellowship of the mystery. This is what we're talking about. The fellowship of the mystery. Me getting with the Jew and the Jew getting with me. Together. And eating a pork sandwich. If I went down to, to the synagogue across the river here and said, Hey, Rabbi, I want to learn some Bible. I want to learn some things, the traditions of the Bible. Can we sit down and talk? And if I were to sit down with him in a restaurant and order pork, I would offend him. And yet, if I were to go to a brother who's saved, who's Jewish, and knows, and sit down in the restaurant with him, we both could sit down and have bacon. With no offense. And I can learn Jewish traditions. And the rapture would, would happen, we both go up. And yet, if I were to sit with that rapture, uh, with that rabbi and the rapture happened, he's staying there to pay the bill, and I'm going home glory. And he's supposed to be the, the apple of God's eye. The mystery from the beginnings of the world has been hid in God. All right. So what we're studying in Ephesians 3, the Jew and the Gentile, was never revealed from Adam to Paul. No one knew. Only God the Father and Jesus Christ knew that one day those two people will get together. And you got to think on, on the thing, with, too, with the Gentiles is you got to think about as far as the nation of Israel, look who's living around them, Ishmael. They're enemies. And yet, an Ishmaelite can get saved today and be joint heir with Christ with a saved Jew. Been hidden God and created all things, now let's get this one, by Jesus Christ. So now we run into another heresy here. That if Jesus Christ is not God and God is not Jesus Christ, Paul has told us, who believes in creation and not evolution, so the Jesus Christ that you must believe in the gospel has to be a creator, can't let it evolve, said that Jesus Christ was there in Genesis 1. Now there's a problem. Okay, I see Genesis 1. One, I see in the beginning God, okay, there's God, created the heaven and the earth. 
And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. There's the Holy Spirit. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Now, where is Jesus Christ? Paul, you, you, got, you got your thing messed up. I don't see Jesus. And yet there he is. John 1.1 1, 1 says, The Word became flesh. The Word with, was God, is God. So when you read, And God said, Genesis 1, <clears throat> There's Jesus Christ. God speaking, Let there be, That is the Word of God. That is Jesus Christ. And then what do you see first? You see light. Well, what did Jesus say? Jesus said, I am the light of the world. So there is Jesus shown with the brightness upon this planet that has been darkened, that has been judged, that has been put into a, a ice age. This earth wasn't an ice age when Satan and, and all his angels were here and he had an idea that I'm going to get over God. But Jesus Christ, God, the Holy Spirit, were there creating. Jesus Christ is not only my my Savior, He's my Creator. The one that made me died for me. The one that made me loved me enough to suffer Isaiah 53. Now, that's not love. I don't know what it is. To the intent, the reason, that now unto the principalities and powers, those are Satan's domain, the ambassadors, the rulers of Satan, never have a good content, in heavenly places, small h. So when you see those stars and the planets and the solar systems and NASA and the National Space Agency and the monkey and the chimpanzee and the dog up there and, and all the junk that they put up there and the moon that's been craterized for whatever reason I wonder the, the realm of let's go to Mars and try to find life there's life there life is on Mars life is on Jupiter life is all over the universe in the realm of Satan and his powers and principalities when you venture out into that darkness you are entering into the realm of Satan now the Bible speaks of three heavens man's domain goes from the dirt or actually underwater to as far as the eagle can fly you get higher than that, you're out of your territory. You're in the realm of Satan. The powers and principalities in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. <clears throat> the church is supposed to know about Satan. It, it, the Bible records we're not to be ignorant of Satan's, the lion's devices. You know, when Christopher Columbus came looking for land, <clears throat> they said, Christopher, there's a dragon out there. He'll eat you. Leviathan. That's the Bible. No, oh, no. It's the wrong water, Christopher. It's the one that's above your head. But now we're not going to get into that study. So when Christopher Columbus came over here and he wasn't eaten by the fiery breathing dragon, you know, the Bible became a lie. No, the Bible's true. You just don't realize you didn't study that the principalities are in heavenly places not earthly places you got it wrong study to show thyself to prove unto God a worker that needeth not to be shamed rightly dividing the word of truth look up to see Satan you may see him as a comet you read Leviathan the story thereof <clears throat> so Jesus Christ is the creator and his power is be above all principalities and powers According to the eternal purpose, this is a purpose, which he purposed, the purpose of purpose in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
Jesus Christ was purposed to be our purpose. Before man ever fell, God knew we would fall. And purposely, Jesus Christ, from Adam to the empty tomb, coming out, purposely suffered, perfectly, purposely lived, bled and died and arose from that grave, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, purposely. And purposely, here the Gentiles are now entered in to the blessed hope. Purposely. It was God did it on purpose. How's that? In whom we have boldness, bold in Christ, and access, you know, you can get in with confidence by the faith of him acts 4 13 so by jesus christ i'm bold on confidence i can get in chapter 2 says we are already seated in heavenly places now this is again this is where it separates me from the jew okay no jew abraham isaac jacob no jew ever saw what was in the holy place when john the baptist's father when we see him on scene everybody's outside the temple he's in the holy place and he's offering up prayers no one else is allowed in there but the priest that's it and then only once a year the high priest we go into the Holy of Holies twice, once for himself and once for the nation Israel, to offer the blood, the Day of Atonement. Only at that time would they be able to go into the Holy of Holies. One man out of the entire nation of Israel. And yet, Ephesians chapter 2, when Jesus died, that veil was rent. From top to bottom. And me, a dead, disgusting Gentile, say, Lord, I please save my soul with the blood of Jesus Christ. I part that ripped curtain, I go in there, and I am seated before the mercy seat. No. I'm seated before God's throne, mercy seat. There was no mercy with the law. No one ever saw it. But when I approach God's throne, when I approach God's throne, my computer just did something, I see God as judge. Now who do I see? I see Jesus Christ. There's the mercy. And what is Jesus doing? He is seated at the mercy seat. Me, a dead Gentile. I have gone further into that temple, which will be destroyed in six years at the writing of Ephesians. I have gone further than where no Jew has gone before. I have now stepped into glory. I am already there. My body hasn't made it yet. After the rapture, if I were to die before the rapture, my soul will go. The body stays. At the rapture, my body gets called up. I'm judged at the judgment seat of Christ. And then, boom, there I am. Wherefore, I desire, Paul's desire, that ye faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. Listen, Paul's going through troubles. Paul's going through problems. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Please do not fail because I'm being persecuted. Be stronger. Be bold. Be confident. Seek the Lord. Yes, I'm suffering. But don't let that be to your quitting. For... This cause, the sufferings, the tribulation, 
I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know what I do when I suffer, Paul saying? I give God I give God the Father. Thanks. I pray to God the Father about the situation. I don't gripe and complain. That's what Paul's saying. Of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Don't, we don't realize how powerful our Heavenly Father is. We don't even know how many people are saved. We don't even know how many angels there are. And yet there's always room. On this side of Calvary, there's always room for whosoever. And when whosoever will come to believe Jesus Christ, God will never reject or refuse that person. And once they will receive Christ, God says, come on into my family. God will never say, there's enough. God will never, ever say, no, sorry, ain't got room for you. And you become the family of God. The mystery. I, as a Gentile, God had never had his eyes set upon me. God the Father is now my Father. I am his Son. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. And we've already talked about the unsearchable riches of Christ. The riches of his glory, well, those things go together. So God is Jesus, Jesus is God. That means they're both together absolutely Rich. You can't fathom the richness of God. You lost my place here. To strengthen with might by his spirit the inner man. So another rich that God has is not gold, silver, cash, automobiles. One of the riches that we have from God that if we are to ask with boldness and confidence and believe in it, God, I need strength. God, I need more love. God, this miserable world, I, I, I'm ready to give up. I need peace. God, no one's listening. I need joy. God, I, I'm suffering so much in pain, and, and I need long suffering. Do any of these fruits call to your attention the richness of God through the fruit of the Spirit? In time of pain, in time of desolation, in time of, of tribulation, gold is going to do me no good. When I am out there witnessing, and it just seems like the whole world is not listening, and they're not. God, I need strength. And I don't mean muscles. He's not going to pack me full of iron and throw me iron to lift. He's going to call upon that fruit, not fruit, but the fruit of the Spirit to say, Here. Here's a multivitamin. Fruits are very healthy for you. Here's a multivitamin for your Christian walk. Here is the strength that you need. You don't need gold. You need love, joy, peace, long-suffering. You need the fruit of the Spirit. And those riches of God can be brought out to anybody and without, without measure of how much you need to keep going. So when you come to the end of your Christian life, you can say, as Paul says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course, and there's a crown laid up for me. Well, what about the unsearchable riches of God when you finish your Christian walk successfully? And God himself will take a crown of all the riches and place it upon your head. And the words of God well done. Thou good and faithful servant. And the only reason why I'm well done and good and faithful. 
is because I sought God to strengthen me. When God says, well done, that's not me. That's God working in me. See, with the riches of God, we ask for physical stuff. We don't ask for strength. We don't ask for the, the spiritual part. We don't ask for the help. We run right off to the doctor. We run right off to the bank. We run right off to the credit card. We run right off to a friend. But we don't run to God. Who can take care of our needs. And our needs are not always money. <clears throat> now watch this. Who might by his spirit in the inner man. The Holy Spirit indwelling in you. That Christ may dwell in your heart by faith. Romans 10, 9 and 10. David never had this promise of the indwelling spirit. David never had Jesus Christ indwell in his heart. David, a man by God who, who was forgiven of adultery and murder. The sure mercies of David, the children of Israel, the stock of Judah. The line of Jesus Christ. David never had 66 books. David could not be assured of his salvation through the law. David never had one atonement for his sins. Yet yeah, I do. David was, all, was allowed to have the bread, the show bread. But he was never allowed into the into the Holy of Holies. I am. I am. The Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. And ye being rooted and grounded in love. Reads about that tree. That righteous tree in Psalms chapter 1. Rooted and grounded. Means you are in. You are planted. And if you are rooted and grounded, you are a plant. The Bible suggests with scripture with scripture, you are a tree. And trees produce fruit. You are to be a fruitful tree that is grounded in Christ. May be able to comprehend with all saints, saved people, what is the breadth, the length, and the depth, and the height? Don't give up there. And to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. Now here's another hard one. We don't know the riches of, of God. We don't know the riches of Jesus Christ. It is beyond our comprehension. So is the love of Christ. We can never comprehend that love. For God is love. Before I became saved, April 1987, I had no idea what love was. And neither did you. Today, Valentine's Day, no one knows what love is. You bought that chocolate for a reason. It wasn't just for love. There's a little fleshiness in there, if I, if I can be clean. There wasn't really a sacrifice. You're human. And if you're lost, that's even more so of your nature. Because you can't have love without having God. And what greater love did Jesus say if a man lay down his life for his friends? So, oh, you love that person. Alright, let's see what happens if... That love is strange when a surgical procedure or life that you have to give your life for that person that you love. The Bible says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ has loved the church and gave himself for it. You can't say you love your wife and if you would not, hey, you know what? I'll take a bullet for her. I'd give her my organ if it, if it give her life. 
see, we, I love you. I, we, we jump to I love you. We don't know what love is. And we can't fathom what the love of Christ left heaven, left glory, left the Father, left the angel, born in a manger, rejected, already despised by the world. There's no room for you, Jesus. Beaten beyond brutality. Nailed to a cross, suffering the, 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 the brutal death of crucifixion. And still rejected and despised. And those that love him and believe in him are despised, rejected, killed, burned. And yet, God is long-suffering, not willing that any should perish. We can't fathom the love of God. We can't fathom the love of Christ. That ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. You want the fullness of God? It's the love of Jesus Christ. Now unto him that is able to... Do exceedingly abundantly above all. Exceedingly is a bunch. Abundantly is a bunch more. Above all is a bunch is more. So now unto him is able to do a bunch, a bunch more, and a bunch is a bunch of the more. That we ask or think according to the power of that worketh in us. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I have that power. Not for the physical, fleshy, styly. But if I really wanted to get serious and live right for God, I can go to God and get that power to do problem is you see this flesh here you see the beard you see the big nose the hands this flesh doesn't want to go full force serving God it fights it sins but if I ever want to lay this flesh down into the grave and leave it I can do with all power unto him be glory in the church you're supposed to glorify God in the church, not programs, not each other, not lifting up the pastor, not living, lifting up that evangelist. God to be the glory, I believe the, the hymn is. How the church has failed in that one. The, the church has become the glory. Look how big we are. Read Revelation 3. We're so rich. And God says, you're poor. You're miserable. You're naked. And yet the church says, look at us. We're so great. The church says, I'm going on to hire the upper way. And you're doing it without Christ. Where Jesus Christ, Revelation 3, is on the door on the outside, knocking to see if anybody will come out of the church. To him be glory in the church by Jesus, by Christ Jesus, throughout all ages, world without end. All to the purpose of Revelation 4 is to give glory to God the Father and the Son, Jesus Christ. And Paul concludes this message, this mystery. This excitement of how rich our Father is, he concludes it with an amen and signs it. Amen. He's writing this down and he amens what he writes down. A sign, seal. Hey, this is great. This is wonderful. To God be the glory of, in the church, and this wouldn't be glorious today. Look how big our Sunday school is. Look how great our, our vacation Bible is. Look at our bazaar.
And Paul says when it comes to the riches of Jesus Christ, when it comes to Jesus Christ, when it's about Jesus Christ, it's all for Jesus Christ. Amen. One more thing I want to mention before I close this chapter is in chapter 3, verse 17, it says, Rooted and grounded in love. Where did that rooted come from? When you run to Mark chapter 4, there's a man sowing seed. Sowing the word, the Bible says. And there are seed that go on fertile ground and produce 30, 60, and 100 fold. I believe the numbers are. I know the 100 is old. What has happened to that seed of the sower? Look, we jump from the gospel. We go to Acts. We go to Romans. First, second Corinthians. We go to Galatians. I always got to look at you. can't. Galatians. And now we're in Ephesians. What do we learn now from that? There is seed that has been rooted and grounded. And boy, it's doing good. And go read Psalms chapter 1. It's a fruitful tree. God be the glory. Amen. Great things he has done.